Well, here's an update. Obviously, as you can see, I was able to get the car. And I know the last video, it was almost a done deal, but I hadn't taken possession. I have paid him. I have taken possession of the car. And I'm going to show you guys the good and the bad and the facts of the $40,000 1996 Viper GTS. Clean title, just rolled 28,000 miles with a hodgepodge of aftermarket parts from a defunct company called West Coast Viper. So this car was originally built with what they call the 650R package. One can only assume, excuse me, I'm trash, so sometimes I have gas in my intestines and stuff, which wealthier people don't seem to have from some of the reception I've gotten in the Viper group. So uh, this car, yeah, hodgepodge of parts, whatever. Hennessy 600 valve covers. It's got a West Coast Viper 650R placard inside. It's badged as a Venom 650R. So it's a little of this and that, and I'm not really sure exactly what it is. I'm not going to run this car anytime soon with, like, the draggy to see what power it makes. I might eventually, but it's a little intimidating at this point. So I'm not sure that I'm ready. If I'm honest, I'm just, I'm man enough to admit that it's a little bit for me. So it definitely makes some power, though. I mean, I don't think I believe 650 flywheel horsepower. I think I could believe, like, 550. But then again, you know, my butt dyno is known to be inaccurate, and we all get immune to cars very quickly. First time I drove this thing, it blew my mind. Now I get into it, and it doesn't shock me. We all get immune very quickly. But let's talk about, we'll talk about the bad first, right? So aluminum panel here over the side exhaust, which was added on performance equipment, sometimes with heat. You can see, yep little bit of blistering of the aluminum and the paint was peeling and it's just blistering there and down along that bottom piece on this side the other side no nope, doesn't seem to be an issue at all really so I guess chalk that up to whatever you want um, overall the paint shows very nicely on the whole car we do have a scuff here don't know what happened the lens there back side of the car this happened in current ownership and you can see some scraping on the lower bumper there same here a little bit honestly the rest of the paint man it shows great it does have yellow tinted lights but I don't mind it I kind of like the Le Mans look we'll cover the other bases here obviously these wheels I spoke erroneously in the previous one these are obviously CCW classics my wits weren't about me when I said they were other wheels I don't know what I was thinking very nice wheels, obviously. Uh, they need to be cleaned up. It has Toyo R888s from like 2011, I think, on the car. And to give a little insight onto why it says Carroll Shelby and why it has the number 98 on it, some of you may know, but I'll tell you now. Um, in 1965, a Cobra Daytona Coupe won the International Sports Car Championship. And that car was number 98, same color combo. Now, this is a Dodge, that was a Ford, but we all probably know the association with Carroll Shelby and the Viper. And then we come to the GTS, and naturally, spiritual successor to, oddly enough, you know, the Cobra Daytona Coupe. And nobody will mask that. So that's why this is that. Uh, I'm going to leave it that way for the unforeseeable future, or the foreseeable future? Well, either way, that... So, in, when's this car is mechanically sorted completely? I mean, completely. And I'm ready to, like, fix the paint on the other side and do, like, a full paint correction and fix this stuff. That's when I'll remove those numbers there. Until then, they stay. For sure. It goes with the kind of track rat aura that the car has. Um, for sure. You can see we've got a little bit of Chrysler showing. Just a little. Um, overall pretty decent so I'm gonna show you the interior and there are some flaws the door hangs a little bit as these do I don't know if there's pins or hinges required, but we'll look into that now door panel fitment I'm gonna tell you on this car. It's poor I've really got to look at it and see because I don't think it's sitting right and uh, You know, it's just it's not You see a little war wound here. I, I'm gonna look at it, you know I'll, I will dig into the car more. I just I haven't had a lot of time. I've been overwhelmed with the whole process um anyhow so door sill here seats you know are pretty decent for the age of the car <clears throat> stepping into the car steering wheel is nice um 
actually. A lot of fingernail scratches over here. That's nice. Um, 28,075 miles. Um, seems to be accurate from the Carfax. This car was offered for sale in Battle Creek, Michigan in 2016 with 23,000 miles. And the Carfax does uh, corroborate that info. So we got the Alpine CD, of course. The AC blows pretty cold. Might need a juice up. Um, which I'll do, but it does blow cold. Um, and we have the, the the badge here. So, West Coast Viper, custom built for this gentleman. Who I I'm going to try to contact this guy, and and that would tell a lot more of the story. But they're defunct now. It's serial number 107. It's a 650R package, and it has the shortest throw shifter I've ever seen. Looks like uh, it took a swim in some cold water, for sure. And I've got the GoPro thing over here. Oh, you'll also notice the mirror. I have it. It's fallen off. I mean. So this thing, as far as Viper GTSs go, right, it's kind of ratty. I think, I'm pretty, I'm extremely picky though. But um, in the Viper community, I think this would definitely be considered ratty. But for any other 1996, I think, I think it's pretty good. And I think uh, if I'm honest, I mean, if I'm really being honest with myself about the real money, right, to completely sort this car, right, and make it a, make it good like really really good you know to bring it to its i guess it's bring a trailer glory right and i'm not going to sell it i just mean value wise um i think you'd be I, I could probably spend nine grand that's just you know that's tires um the clutch slave cylinder might leak just a little bit i had to bleed the uh, master cylinder earlier today to get clutch pedal actuation back i think i'm leaking at the slave cylinder um if i was in there i would do a clutch and a throttle bearing just because resurface the flywheel of course um some of the paint stuff some of the stuff in the front bumper and then like a paint correction and some interior tidbits yeah i mean let's be realistic you know knocking on nine grand but i spent 40 so if i'm in this for 49 and it's like really really looking good you know looking eight and a half out of ten overall i mean i'd be really happy and to be honest with you now i think it's like a 7.75 out of 10 that's that's me it is very quick obviously so to give it an update in the other cars right aside from the viper that's pretty you know that's pretty well covered i mean that's that's it man it's real i mean and, and i'm still in shock it's a phenomenal car to drive very visceral i'm very lucky i'm very much an ordinary man and uh not not i don't make a lot of money so like i said some of the guys in the viper group they saw me smoking a cigarette in the other video there and they said oh you're gonna ruin it by smoking in it i don't smoke in the car i don't even smoke in my house you know, I mean, of course, I guess a good argument would be that I do smoke with my lungs. And so it is still stupid, but I don't smoke in the cars. Just to be really clear, I do swear in them. So my sister's buying the Beamer. The M Roadster is going to my sister. Super, super stoked for her. Plus, I get dibs. So if she sells it, I get to buy it back. Beautiful. I probably won't have the money for a long time because this is going to eat it. It's corrosion here. Goodness. But, you know, I think I could clean a lot of this up. You know, you take this stuff off. Aluminum's very forgiving, so. Um, very forgiving. Now, the Corvette still kind of in the air. A couple people are interested. Um, we'll see what goes on with that. You know, when I got the car, I did have a bit of an issue grinding in a fifth. I did a transmission service. Did it a few times. I haven't had any issues since. And that, I think, kind of maybe... Discourage one gentleman, which totally understand. I mean, it's nothing that needs immediate attention. Even then, when it did it, it was full acceleration in fourth into fifth. It would just grind a little. If you did it slow, it wouldn't. But I, I understand. I understand. But that car is still for sale. I really like to get 14.9 for it. I got 20 in it. It's one of the nicest LT4s. Whatever. You know what the car is. If you, you've seen the channel. If you want to get a hold of me, uh, go ahead. So that's the Viper. So I'm going to try to tack on some driving here. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to try to attach this and we're going to go for a drive. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go for a drive. I'm I apologize if my voice is really loud. My head is like right next to my phone. My GoPro like on my head, I it doesn't work. I can't see out. And I tried to mount it in the back window and it's uh no, it's too far away. So we're going to do it like this. Go ahead and fire it up. Does make a little bit of like throughout bearing type noise when the clutch is out. Press it and it goes away. 
I mentioned the slave cylinder issue. I think there's a leak there. So when this car goes in to get the, uh, the slave cylinder and the clutch system checked out, um, if they're going in there, obviously clutch, throughout bearing, slave cylinder, resurface flywheel, standard stuff. You know, because when you're in there, you know, that's what you do. Um, even poor guys like me, they're going to take care of a car like this. So, um, this car is actually pretty well up to temp. I was driving this a little while ago. So, we're uh, pretty much ready to go here. I stalled it earlier for the first time. I didn't think it was possible. Um, and it turned out I was in third gear. <laughs> So it made a pretty good effort for third, and that just goes to speak of the torque that these cars make. I mean, it didn't even stall immediately. I, yeah, it was crazy. So much power, so much torque. Okay. And you know, if you drive it normal, the manners pretty good. A bit uh, tractor-esque for sure, very torquey. It's like a tank engine, you know. That's the best way I can associate it. It's, it's got a lot of brute force. And this is, you know, the first Viper I've ever driven. It's the first Viper I've ever touched. I'm still in shock that I own this car. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I, you know, you say you love a car or whatever, but when I first drove this car, I was like, you know, I, Never had a car, I've both had over a hundred. Nothing's ever made me feel like this one. It makes me wonder, did I ever really love a car until this one? I don't know, but it certainly is special for an average guy like me in a small town. You know, when I roll through downtown, I mean, people break their necks at this car. It might as well be a Lamborghini, and that's kind of how I feel about it. It might as well be a Diablo. I mean, really, it's, it's that special to me. The beautiful thing is, with all this power and torque, I don't even need to hammer this car to have fun. I'm cruising right now 55 miles an hour, um, maybe 1700 RPM or so in fifth gear. And you know what? It's a lot of fun. Typically, I would have the windows down and some music playing, but for the sake of the video, obviously, windows are up. Um, it's so. It's raw, you know what I mean? But if you, it, I guess it's very, it's a very reactive car. I don't know how else to put it. It, uh, it will behave how you treat it. If you drive it tame, it can be tame, but if you get crazy, it'll get crazy right back in your face. It's like a, it's like a crazy girlfriend, man. I mean, you treat her right, she's sweet, but you know, one wrong thing, you know, if you treat her bad, she'll make your life hell and she might kill you. And sometimes I get the feeling that this car does want to kill you. I think it's it's just so raw. No traction control, no ABS. You know, I did a, <laughs> I did a video on the C4 there. Obviously a lot of videos, especially the LT4 cars over the years. And recently, I did one on, you know, can you daily drive a C4 Corvette? And the consensus for me was, yeah, under certain conditions. I think you'd have to be a wild man to daily drive this Viper. And and I say that because it's just a lot. Everything's a little heavier. There's just a lot of power. And uh, yeah, I, I just don't think so. And I think the maintenance cost would kill you eventually for sure. Uh, the big difference I'd say between the Corvette and this other than power is the Corvette's definitely a grand touring car. And, and, and I mean, it's really a grand touring car first. I mean, it's a sports car in some way, but it's, it's really a grand touring car with a good amount of power in a manual. But this thing is just a raw brute. It wants to be thrown around a track. It wants to shred and it wants to go. And, and really, it's still a good touring car and it, it's still pretty comfortable. The ride quality is very good. And I'm picky about ride quality. I mean, this thing rides really nice. Really, I mean, for what it is, I would expect nothing better. Um, but I think it, it would just be a little much for daily use. It just, it's just not a thing. So it's kind of funny. They're, they're, I always thought, as a kid, I thought Corvette and Viper like competitor, but man, they're nothing alike. Uh, but Viper is just like a Corvette turned up to 11, I guess, to use that saying. You know, it's just a little more 
crazy. Although this car is not stock, you know, I haven't driven a stock hybrid. It's the only one I've ever driven, and so it's not to say that uh, a stock one maybe it's a little more user friendly. It could be, um, and then there's plenty of built Corvettes that are way nastier than this car. We're in lovely Martin, Michigan today. There's the post office. So we'll go down here. I'll get on it a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just soaking it in. Man, this is all surreal for me. I just kind of, some people were commenting on the other video, you know, like, you know, congrats, I think. Like, I hope you got it. I hadn't taken possession yet. So I really wanted to make a video. Well, I mean, you know, for anybody who cares, but also, a lot of you know this channel more than anything. I'm you know, a small channel. I'm just there's no stories or no bullshit. It's just what's going on with my cars and my journey and my pursuit of the cars I love. And it's really for me, you know. It's so I can go back and look someday and remember all these cars with a video. But uh, and remember how I felt today. But I can tell you, if you get the opportunity to drive one of these cars, take it, take it. I don't care what the situation is. If someone says, here's the keys, take it for a spin, just do it. Because it is like nothing else I've ever had. I've had 100 cars. Now, I've never driven any super exotics. I've never driven a Porsche or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. In terms of American cars, this is the craziest car. You know, it's really the craziest car. It's on this side of like a Vector W8 or something. But as far as, you know, semi actual production cars this is pretty much the craziest one that, that i'm aware of and i'm pretty well versed in automotive history so i mean that's self-proclaimed but um man so i'm gonna after these people pass i'll get on a little bit now um here in mexico doesn't swing away but it might I don't know I guess we'll see inaugural Viper video. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. That's the story, man. If you guys have seen the other video, you know how this came about. And if you haven't, check it out. Go ahead and check it out, because it's a crazy story. I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed. Thank you, Jim, for selling me this car. Uh, I'll do my best to take care of it. And for everybody that watches, you know, and subscribes, I really appreciate you guys. I don't get a lot of money from YouTube, but I do get a little, and it helps. Especially when you're stupid like me, and you lose money on every single car, you know. It really bit helps. So, thank you for watching. I'm not some big timer. I'm really an average guy. This is crazy. Any of you who don't own a Viper, watch Marketplace. That's all I can say. If you got a dream car, keep your eyes peeled, because it could happen. It really could. And, uh, 
All right. Thanks for watching, guys.